Joining us now to talk about this latest move by the NLC as well as the order restraining Governor Abdullahi Ganduje from implementing the breakup of Kano Emirate is uh, public affairs analyst Adini Kunu. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's start with the NLC. What's your initial reaction to this? Well, I think that um, there is no smoke um, without fire, or you wouldn't have fire without smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the crux of the matter, uh, Chris Ngege, the Minister of Labour, uh, would have actually constituted a board for the NSITF. Um, the board, the last one was dissolved four years ago. Uh, Kokori was, in, was actually nominated by the current president. That is his superior mm -hmm. two years ago, over two years ago. And one would have expected him to actually, you know, go according to what is ideal, which is to constitute a board. As a matter of fact, in the course of, you know, prodding here and there, I found out that unlike what normally happens because the board, you know, jointly approves whatever contract that goes in and the rest of it all, people say what they see is they find new supplies in their offices and they don't know how that came about. That tells you mm -hmm. that that's also not according to what should be. Let us also emphasize this. Whenever you hold Labor Days across the country, whoever is the main person in terms of the minister or whoever is senior as far as the Labor Ministry is concerned represents the president. The president was in the UK when we held the Labor Day celebrations. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chris Ngege, who should have represented the president, was conspicuously and disrespectfully absent from that. Then at the same time, you'd ask me, what is it that is holding back the Labour Minister from constituting a board? They're talking about corruption. Corruption, is it the person mm -hmm. that was nominated to chair the board that is corrupt or who? Because for the president to have actually nominated somebody, this man in question would have actually been checked proper and through before they nominated him. Okay. So it becomes something that I do not understand mm -hmm. and that really is a slap on the face of an administration that stands for anti-corruption not to have a board as yet. I have to say there very clearly that it is important for government mm -hmm. to listen to what Labour is saying so we don't have another crisis on our hands. Because if you look at it, they've told him anywhere they find him, they'll pick at him. Mm -hmm. And that could actually result in something we do not want at this moment. Okay, let's talk about the protests. Do you think it's absolutely necessary, you know, to have protested over the board nomination? In the first place, mm -hmm. the ministry or the particular person in question falls under the auspices of what Labour gets involved in. And it's also something that is under the overseeing, as it were, of the president. So why is an appointee of government not doing that? It affects the Labour, the Labour circles itself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a huge disrespect to the representatives of workers in this country, particularly for the number of years that we've waited to have a board happen. I think this thing shouldn't be. And don't forget that what affects the eyes can affect the entire body. Absolutely. And Labour is trying to tell the world mm -hmm. that the NSITF is no way smaller than all government agencies or parasitals whose issues are also part of their concern. Okay. So it is not out of place for them to protest, particularly with the way mm -hmm. the Labour minister has been handling the do not forget, it is the same Labour Minister over a month ago or thereabouts that said we have so many doctors in the country that we're expecting some. So when a Labour Minister continues to goof, a mm -hmm. Labour Minister continues to do what Ungugi is doing, then it is better that they get him out. Don't forget that they talked about the health insurance scheme and the professor, I think uh, Professor Hassan Osulaiman, who was eventually removed, who was the General Secretary of that particular uh, health insurance scheme. Mm -hmm. When people say this man was corrupt at first, the president returned and actually reinstated him at first, but when he found out that the pressure was too much, he had to listen. So I think Labour mm -hmm. should press on and have what is right done. Okay, okay. there's one of the um, uh, uh, Dr. Chris Ingege's quotes that I picked up on, and I really want us to talk about that yes, and get your opinion on that. So he says, calling out workers on a flimsy and selfish excuse of non-inauguration of the NSIFT with Frank Kukuri as the chairman did not constitute a trade dispute as contained in the Labour Act. Do you agree? He doesn't understand one bit the definition of labor representation. Wow. A board mm -hmm. is actually a statutory composition that the president has nominations for. And once it is constituted, it works in sync 
with the permanent secretary, with top executives and directors of that particular agencies and ministers. I'm teaching him what he perhaps should know better as a labor minister. So one would have expected him to understand what is territory. Mm -hmm. So I think Dr. Chris Ngigi, having made a very colossal error mm -hmm. in talking about the medical doctors in Nigeria, has also made another colossal error in talking about what this is indeed about wrongly. The constitution of a board of the NSITF is completely within the purview of labor. Okay. You're talking about nomination. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a board that oversees how things go in a government ministry. I think it's another colossal goof by the Minister of Labor. Yeah. Okay, I wish I had more time to ask you more questions. But before I round up on this and before we move on to the Emirates uh, saga, let's quickly find out from you, you know, what's your take on how this matter can be resolved in your own words? How would the you first say? thing is to wake up on Monday and mm -hmm. Dr. Chris Ngeke says, I'm ready to constitute a board. There is no reason why you wait on the action your superior are taking for over two years. You are an appointee of the president. And immediately the president says, I have nominated somebody. There is absolutely no reason for you to delay the constitution of the board. Because as a matter of fact, you're not appointing the person or not constituting the board prevent what the, the oversight uh, responsibilities of that board and by extension the ministry of personnel or the agency of government mm -hmm. so i have to say here that i hope sincerely that ongige will retract retrace these strong steps wake up on monday morning constitute the board with coco as leading that board so that we can have a government agency running smoothly Okay, thank you very much. Let's quickly move on to uh, the uh, Emirates uh, incidents that has just recently yes, taken place, you know. And uh, the, the latest development on that is that we've heard that Ganduje has still gone ahead, you know, to sort of um, uh, issue and, and declare who the Emirates are. Do you not think that's actually downright rebellious? It is cascading impunity. And it is not only associated with the APC, it is also in the PDP. Let me, let me explain this because it's very key. In this country, there is a sheikh held, the leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, Sheikh El Zagzaki, mm -hmm. well over two years now, by this government. Every court gone to her said, release this man. The presidency didn't release him. Sambo Dasuki went as far as the ECOWAS court for him to be released, and it was so granted, but the presidency hasn't released him. When I say it's a cascading impunity, that simply means even from the presidency, the upper echelon of power, you'd expect that there's a better understanding mm -hmm. of how things go there, but that didn't happen. So what happens? It comes down to the state. Now, let's not forget that in the first place, if you have mm -hmm. an emirate, in this country, the only states that actually have two emirates, mm -hmm. where you have many other emirates, is Sokoto, Sokoto. Mm -hmm. and Kanu. Mm -hmm. If at all you want to disheavel, as is this case now, it is only ideal that you talk to the man who has preserved the ancestral order of, of a particular state mm -hmm. for many years. Okay. So I think it's important to do the ideal. Okay. By not disobeying court orders. It's what important. do you think now will be the implication now that he has disobeyed? I think contempt of court has implications. Mm -hmm. um, they may not take him to jail mm -hmm. now, but we can reserve judgment in that regard. And I think it's not a very good precedent for the governor of a state not to respect the law. Mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about the independence of the judiciary, one of the areas you test the independence of the judiciary is actually in its obedience by whoever actually has the verdict mm -hmm. in his or her favor or otherwise. And in this instance, I think it's a matter that should be looked into as importantly as possible. For instance, if you look at how they passed the bill mm -hmm. uh, to actually have four new Emirates created, it has to be said that it is one of the fastest, if not the fastest. On Monday, the yes. bill was actually sponsored. By Wednesday, mm -hmm. we have it passed by the, uh, by the governor. And by Saturday, we have names out. So we're talking about somebody who indeed should know better. So I think very sincerely here mm -hmm. that there's always a process. And if you look at it, you cannot completely mm -hmm. separate the constitution or the creation of four new emirates in a place without even talking to the person who bears, you know, mm -hmm. that rulership or leadership Absolutely. over the years. Okay. It's important. All right. Um, there's another angle to this story, and that's, you know, uh, depleting the influence of Sanusi himself. Do you think that was the case where, when Ganduje decided, you know, to go about this? You allow me to take you on a little bit of history, if okay. time permits. Before the switch of the former governor from the APC to the PDP, 
And let's remind ourselves that it was first in the PDP mm -hmm. while Sanusi was still the governor of Central Bank. In February of 2014, he was relieved of his appointment. As a matter of fact, the son of the Ado Bayaro, who, mm -hmm. who was there... He's one of the new... He's one of the new... Mm -hmm. I think he's for Rano or Gaya. Yes. I'm trying to remember that. Now, what happened back then was that it was popular as much as... Sanusi was popular, mm -hmm. whose great grandfather actually was the Sanusi, uh, the, the first. Yes. He's the second. Now, what they thought was this eldest son of Adobaro was going to take over, but he didn't because he had the support of the past governor of Kano, who then moved to the APC. And even after he was, you know, appointed as the Amir of Kano, he actually held, he was actually kept in government as to prevent the protests that happened in Kano up until now. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less like things have changed. And let's also say this, that during the rerun elections, or even before that, he didn't give support to Governor Ganduje. And in fact, Ganduje lost very healthily, if I should say, in Kano. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are really political reactions to what is perceived as not being respectful, not actually considering the fact that the governor's office is superior to his, it's pure political move. Okay. And it's obviously not in favor of the people, mm -hmm. but of course self-serving. Okay, earlier on when we were discussing, you know, I picked up on one of the things that you said, which is, you know, the manner in which, you know, the, the whole thing was uh, convened, you yes. know. So, like, um, do you think it was properly done? Because you said by Monday this happened, by Wednesday this happened, and, you know, there's... and So, I, like, I, the speed in which this matter was I, handled. I want to say very emphatically mm -hmm. that if in Lagos, for instance, you are to create new areas where you have traditional rulers. I believe very strongly that you will consult three first-class obers in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Obor of Lagos, Obari Wanakolu, uh, the Obor of Badagri, Aholu Meutoi, and of course the Obor of Badagri. Those are the three first-class obers in Lagos. They are top and above all others. So what you would have expected, mm -hmm. the Emir of Kano is a first-class Emir in this country. There is no way, even if you want to do it anyhow you want to do it, there's no way you want to create new emirates in an existing emirate and you don't seek the impute of the man who holds sway. It mm -hmm. is not done. And I tell you very sincerely mm -hmm. that the reason why it has become a subject of litigation is simply because certain lacuna have been observed and these particular ones are going to be tested in court. I also have to say this, that any time political leaders take the steps they take, mm -hmm. they really are projecting some kind of non-verbal communication to the people they lead. Mm -hmm. That's, so, okay. sorry, sorry to come in. So based on one of the things that you said, you know, I'm beginning to get the feeling that this is not just um, rebellious. Do you not think, based on what you've said now, that this, in, in seeing he didn't follow the right procedure, you know, would you not say this was malicious then in some way? shape or form. I wouldn't want to substitute your word. Okay. Malicious is the proper word. Thank you. And let me also say this at the same time, that before the elections, not the rerun in Kano, the Emir Sanusi did not show any kind of support for Gandhiji. He felt he wasn't competent enough. And also to, to add pepper to the injury was mm -hmm. the fact that they saw him collect bribes that people have actually said the president has not spoken to up until this moment that was verified. Let me tell you that. The BBC and other international media agencies verified that video and confirmed it to be genuine before they actually put that video out where Gandhi J was stuffing dollars in his Baban mm -hmm. And I must say very clearly here that when the Sanusi that we know who is very outspoken, even when he was the governor of Central Bank until he was suspended in uh, on February of 2014, mm -hmm. let us say here very categorically that he's known to always speak to the issues as well. Don't also forget mm -hmm. that he's the same man who said that Muslims up north are the most backward when compared to other people. He kept also speaking to the issues of women equity and a lot of things. So his ideals are sophisticated, are liberal, and really very, very, very far away mm -hmm. from the needless conservatism that we see from the region where he emanates. Mm -hmm. So it is therefore important to say that it is malicious, as you said, mm -hmm. but we don't need such maliciousness in our politics if we must move forward. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You've put it well in, 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 in a very good way, I would say. Thank, Thank you very much Thank indeed. Thank you for having me. We've been listening to uh, Public Affairs Analyst Adeni Yukunu. Thank you very much once Thank again. You.